which is right next door to Temple University. You know, what better place could it be but board and Cecil B. Moore? What better place than Cecil B. Moore, the great, the great activist, Cecil B. Moore Esquire? Yes, yes, long live, brother, Cecil B. Moore. Every march that we had, we had a theme. Our last march was, Dr. Montero is North Philadelphia. The theme of this march is let's reclaim our legacy. Dr. Montero is gonna have a legacy. When he's not here anymore, he will have a legacy. Temple University is trying to cut short his legacy. When Dr. Montero is no longer here, you cannot, we can't talk about Dr. Montero without talking about the great Du Bois. That's right. That's right. We can't talk about Dr. Montero without talking about North Philadelphia. We can't talk about Dr. Montero without talking about the philosophy classes, the, philo the classes that he has every Saturday at the Church of the Advocate, what he does in the community. That's his legacy. But Temple is trying to cut short his legacy. We're not gonna let that happen. The police presence here, every event that we have, the police presence has gotten thicker and thicker. That's telling us something though. We like that it's getting thick and thick. And it can get thicker because we're going to bring Temple to their knees. Yes! We're going to bring them to their knees. Yes! And what's going to do it is going to be the power of the people. Yes! It's going to be the everyday person that's going to bring Temple to their knees and going to reinstate him with tenure. Some people have been laughing at this movement because they don't believe in the power of the people. They don't believe that it's going to be the everyday man, the everyday woman that's going to put Dr. Montero back in there with tenure. Amen. Again, our narrative has been changing. It's not changing. I want to introduce my co mc for this event, Paul. Brother Paul, my current Paul is a part of the Student Coalition, and if y'all all been following this movement, y'all all know what the Student Coalition has been doing. They've been stepping it up, and they're, they're, they're doing it, and they're bringing it. These are young revolutionaries. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our next speaker. I'm not going to take up a lot of noise, but I wanted y'all to know why we're here. I don't want it to be any kind of confusion. We're here because we're demanding on this day, May 8th, we're demanding reinstatement of Dr. Montero with tenure. We're demanding justice 
for black North Central Philadelphia. That's all aligned and that's all part of our narrative. Supers must go! Supers must go! And also, yes, my brother, and the firing of Dean Sheepish, yes. Yes, we're asking for her firing, yes. Yes. I want to introduce now Brother Curtis, Representative Brother Curtis Thomas. State Representative. State Representative Curtis Thomas. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see so many people here today. I'm glad for the narrative. I'm glad everybody gets clear about the narrative. I have been knowing Dr. Montero for more than the last 20 years. I know he says it might be 30. But one thing I do know is that he has been a part of this community. Not just as a resident, but a working activist in this community. There's not too many issues that have impacted North Philadelphia that we have not witnessed, witnessed the activism by Dr. Montero. I am here today because I continue to ask Temple University to share with me, to share with me, why was his contract not renewed? I have not seen any negative evaluations about the 12 years that he has been at this university. I have not seen any conduct on the part of Dr. Montero as a resident of this community, as a professor, and as someone who works directly with his students, I've never seen any conduct that would give rise to even bringing in the question of why his contract has not been renewed. And in the absence, in the absence of any facts, and I know that there are none, his contract must be renewed, yeah. must be renewed. The university must understand that diversity is not our weakness, it is our strength. It is our strength. Having a member of the university faculty is Dr. Mon as Mon Dr. Montero is a plus, it is not a negative. And we promote this concept of neighbor to neighbor, where you have a jewel that is not just academically ready, but somebody that's a part of the community. Temple can shine across the world by having somebody like Dr. Montero as a part of their professional staff. You're not losing anything, you're gaining everything. And so the issue of why he should not be renewed is tantamount to being non-negotiable. The question is, is get it done now. Get it done now. Either step up, either step up and provide the community at large with some real facts that might go into why his contract should not be renewed. Or step up and say that I am renewing his contract and I am going to give him the tools that he needs to become a tenured professor at this university. And so I thank each and every one of you. But like with all struggles, it is not easy. It is not going to be easy. And so I kind of close out with saying to each and every one of you, and that is it's important to let the university know that I am too anointed to be disappointed. I am too blessed to be stressed. I am too satisfied to be mystified by boom bash that you've been given about Dr. Montero. So we need to keep it moving. Yes. Keep it moving. Yes. Keep it moving. Yes. Someone mentioned about Dr. Montero's legacy. His legacy 
is his contribution. And I don't even want to entertain a notion about doing something about his legacy. There is too much that he can offer to be talking about a legacy in the past. We should be talking about his legacy in the future. Yeah. There's some children yet unborn yeah. that need to know about the contribution of Dr. Montero. Yeah. And so let's stay busy with that. And I'm real excited that we have the Honorable Dr. Cornell West here with us. Yeah. I wish, I wish Temple was out here on the corner and giving Dr. West an offer that he can't refuse to join Dr. Montero here at this university. Now you want to talk about some stellar, stellar instruction. Have Dr. Montero and Dr. West at this, at this university. Dr. West, thank you for being here. And let me thank each and every one of you. And don't forget, don't forget the outcome belongs to us. Right. It belongs to us. Right. And if this is non-negotiable, then we got to stay busy till it happens. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Curtis Thomas. He's been supportive of Dr. Montero from the beginning. I now want to introduce Dr. Ron Frazier, who's a part of the alumni, and also he signed the national call to reinstate Dr. Montero, the national call by academics and scholars. Dr. Frazier. Thank you, Patrice. This is such an honor to be on this podium with Dr. West and Dr. Montero. Um, this is a struggle that we have to win. As our state representative said, this is non-negotiable. We have to listen to the people. It is such an honor seeing this much people in support of Montero. We have to remember the legacy of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the legacy surrounding here. Less than 20 miles from here is Media PA. In 1971, it was in that FBI office that the details of Cointo Pro was exposed. We have to take that current, that same drive that pushed those people, John Raines, Bonnie Raines, and, 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 and David Off, and take that same struggle and remember what they did in breaking into that office and exposing Cointelpro to the world, exposing the ways that the U.S. government kills off, not even communists, but people sympathetic to communism, kills them so that younger generations cannot know about them. No, they said we are going to break into this office, expose the U.S. government to the world, and show them that this is worthy. We need academic diversity. What Malefi Asante is doing to the Department of African American Studies is exactly what the U.S. government tries to do with black people in killing off the most militant radical route. But we can't let that happen. We can't let that happen. You are gathered here for a reason. The reason you are gathered here is because you're telling, you're telling Asante, you're telling Temple University, you are telling President Theobald that no, we will not sit by and tolerate and let the most militant black strong men die off. The whole of America is based on separating and ruining the lives of black men, okay? If you look back at history and you, you understand why lynchings happen, they always happen to the black men who are enterprising. They always happen to the black men who thought differently about how society should run, okay? Huey Newton, did you know that Dr. Montero was a presidential senator? He was a U.S. senator for the Communist Party running with Angela Davis, okay? If Temple drops him, nobody gets that perspective. Nobody understands why people would understand communists. We're not trying to turn you into communists. We're trying to let you know that there are people out here. And I'm so grateful that I was alive, the time I was alive in, to have Dr. Montel on my dissertation committee, have his perspective, read my dissertation, and offer his input and provide a perspective that was sympathetic to the man that I did my dissertation on, Paul Robeson. Right. We gotta be responsive. 
we got to be clear. We got to be ideologically clear. Dr. Uh, Dr. Montero is ideologically clear about what his purpose is as an educator. And we have to make sure that we continue the legacy of those activists that broke in. Their names are exposed now because they waited 40 years because they understand the power of what they did. Showing the world how the U.S. government killed their own citizens and how right now Temple University wants to follow the path of UPenn, follow the conservative path of this whole nation in making sure that even professors sympathetic to communism get cut off. But we won't let it happen. Power to the people. Thank you, Dr. Frazier. Dr. Joy? I know Dr. Joy, Sandra Joy. Yes. Dr. Sandra Joy is also one of our alumni of Temple. She's also one of the first to sign a national call of academics and scholars. Dr. Sandra Joy from the University of Rowan. A Rowan University. Thank you, Patrice. That's right, I'm a sociology professor at Rowan University and I stand in solidarity today with my colleague in academia my comrade in the movement and my friend, Tony Montero. It's, it's a great privilege to stand here on your behalf and amongst all these wonderful people. It's truly an honor to be here. I was with Tony when he found this out, if you remember Tony. We were at a Mamiya demonstration in front of the Fox station and he said, do you mind giving me a ride up to Temple real quick? I just need to pick up my new contract. <laughs> so I sat outside in front of Garnet Felter and something told me when I looked in my rear view mirror and I saw his face when he was walking out of Garnet Felter, it was not good news. And when I, he sat in the car and we read uh, the letter together, I knew that it was going to be on and I envisioned these sorts of gatherings. So I'm very proud to be part of it today. I'm very proud to be among a lot of friends here I see, a lot of comrades in the movement who we all know the meaning of freedom, don't we? We freed Lynn Stewart. We got Russell Schultz out of solitary confinement. We are bringing Mamiya home. We're going to bring the Move 9 home, Leonard Peltier, and all political prisoners. But I'd like to say a few words today about the meaning of academic freedom, if I could. The concept of academic freedom is based on the idea that the free exchange of ideas on campus is essential to a good education. Academic freedom ensures that colleges and universities are safe havens for inquiry, places where students and scholars can challenge the conventional wisdom of any field, be it art, science, politics, Africana studies, or any others. Institutions of higher education are conducted for the common good, and the common good depends upon the free search for truth and its free exposition. Academic freedom must be protected to encourage free inquiry, promote the expansion of knowledge, and create an environment in which learning and research can flourish, thereby enhancing the quality of higher education and benefiting society. But increasingly, in recent decades, academic freedom is under attack. College and university administrations adopt a corporate model of governance, hire more and more faculty off the tenure track. These contingent appointments now equal about two-thirds of the total faculty appointments in the United States, with part-time positions equaling half. With over 70% of the academic workforce working without protections of tenure and its process, contingent faculty, those who are off the tenure track, have no meaningful job security and as a result, find their voice limited in terms of what they can say in the classroom and their research and about their institutions. Another concept is important for us to talk about today is shared governance. Shared governance is the set of practices under which college faculty and some staff members participate in significant decisions about the operation of their institutions. Shared governance is democracy and action intended to ensure that academic decisions are made for strictly academic, not political, commercial or bureaucratic reasons. Without shared governance, academic freedom is in danger because academic freedom is a professional right that makes sense only in the context of a self-governing faculty. The practice of academic freedom and the practice of political freedom reinforce one another because professors are free to create a space of scholarly and political inquiry. Tenure is important because it promotes accountability and quality in higher education. It ensures the institution's curriculum, teaching, research, and other academic programs will be, will be framed and developed by trained and motivated professionals who profess a deep, lasting commitment to the institution. It gives faculty the independence 
to speak out about contentious matters and to challenge the administration on issues of new curriculum and quality without putting their jobs on the line. And we know Dr. Montero has proudly and without shame spoken out when he's seen problems at this institution. And I'm very proud of that. So in closing, academic freedom rights are under constant attack and it's critical these rights be defended because a majority of today's instructors, those are in these contemporary, I'm sorry, these temporary contingent jobs, do not have the critical protection these rights provide. Dr. Tony Montero has paid a price for his dedication to free inquiry. He has paid a price for his dedication to his students and the community of North Philadelphia. He's paid a price for all of us. For all of us who seek justice, who seek freedom, be it academic freedom or freedom in general, for all people to speak the truth, to stand up to the powers that be. We must not let him bear the cost of his treatment alone. We must stand up, speak out, and bear that cost with him because as W.B. Du Bois once said, the cost of liberty is less than the price of oppression. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Julie. And now I want to introduce one of Temple students, Riley McDonald. Riley McDonald from the Feminist Collective. Thank you. How are you guys doing this afternoon? Uh, my name is Riley and I'm here representing Temple Area Feminist Collective in solidarity with this movement. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, today I want to talk about student-on-student -student violence and the erasure of student-on-student -student violence and how it's something our police force chooses to ignore. Two weeks ago, a female friend of mine was physically assaulted by three frat brothers at Kappa Sigma who beat her up because she dared talk back to them. This story is one amongst an array of stories I've heard from close friends who've been both battered and sexually assaulted at frat houses and parties on campus. And almost every person who's, who's reached out to the police to report these instances had been told that there's not enough evidence. But I can't help but think about the fact that somehow they found the time and evidence to convict three adolescent girls who threw a brick at the Temple student's face. They managed to find enough evidence to charge the three adolescent girls as adults. And however time there's a gunshot fired into the air, we get a TU alert. Why aren't we getting TU alerts telling us to stay the hell away from Kappa Sigma? Why aren't these frat boys going to jail? Why is it that you can get expelled for plagiarizing a paper, but nothing happens when you rape someone? For every time I've heard someone say, not every frat boy is the same, I've heard someone say, the locals are dangerous. This is how colonialism works. Right. Tell it, tell we strip the other of their humanity as a justification for our disruption of their community and a justification for the racist police state. The student who was assaulted with the brick received justice because the people who were assaulted her were three black girls. Non-students, the vicious other. My friends won't receive justice because the people who assaulted them were students. They were white men paying tuition. The university counts on their alumni dollars and the university doesn't want negative statistics. The true menace of North Philly acts out of entitlement. He is violent because if he says he didn't do it, people will always believe him. He is a wolf in what we perceive to be sheep's clothing and I find that absolutely terrifying. I demand justice for survivors, and I demand justice for the community, and I demand serious repercussions for student-on-student -student crime. Thank you. Thank you, Riley. I would like to introduce now Mr. Henry Nichols, president of 1199C of the Hospital Workers Union. Thank you so very much. When I was here last, I said our problems are not out here. Yes. They are in there. Yes, are. The resolve that we seek is not out here. It's in there. I am the union that represents the majority of the workers who work at this campus. But I'm here because I'm driven by one of my leaders in the past, the Dr. A. Philip Randolph, yes. believe in every word he said when he said, you get what you're organized to take. Are you listening? You get what you're organized to take. We get what we're organized to take. And so we have come here today to say, we have to continue to organize, organize, and then remember 
Justice will come not on the outside, well, justice is going to come on the inside and call me back when we are, in, we are prepared to go inside to take the justice that we are exceed. I'll be back then. Call me when we are prepared to go in. Thank you, President Nicholas. I want to now introduce Joe Pia from International Action Center. He's done a lot of work here. Matter of fact, several months ago, or maybe a year ago, he was rolling right out here in front of Morgan Hall This wasn't even built yet, demanding jobs for black community here. So Mr. Piat from International Action Center. Good afternoon. The fight for equality is far from over. That's what this fight at Temple is about. Institutional racism versus equality. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled last June that a key provision of the 1965 Voting Rights Act designed to prevent racial discrimination in certain voting laws was no longer necessary. That's a lie! That's a lie! In another bad decision last month, the Supreme Court sided with Michigan's ban on affirmative action, saying it was the state's prerogative to decide how it wanted to handle admissions policy. It's no coincidence these racist court judgments are happening at a time of crisis for capitalism. The 1% want us to fight each other instead of those really responsible for poverty and wars. Both of these decisions were based on the misguided idea that discrimination is a thing of the past. In the real world, we know racism is a hurdle people of color are forced to overcome on a daily basis. <clears throat> Take the construction industry, for example. If you look at any large construction site in Philadelphia, odds are the high-paid jobs are done by white workers. That's why the Fair Hiring Coalition came together in 2011. This building behind you, Morgan Hall, was being built mostly by white workers, many from New Jersey and Delaware. Many black Latino workers, black and Latino workers and women are qualified and experienced carpenters, electricians, and other skilled tradespeople. In addition, zip codes 19133 and 19121, which are next to Temple, have the highest poverty rates in this city. These living wage jobs must include people from these communities. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's why we have picket lines on this corner for weeks. We spoke up at Temple Board of Trustees meetings. We gathered 1,200 petitions from the surrounding community. And today, Temple's construction jobs are now as high as 40% black, Latino, Asian, and women. That's still not high enough. That's right. <laughs> Philadelphia demographics, which is 63% people of color, and it should be on every construction site in Philly, not just in Temple. All construction sites should be 63% people of color and women. That's right. All right. What does this have to do with Tony here? <laughs> African Americans, Latinos, and members of the community around Temple, such as Tony Montero, belong in positions of influence, yes, yes. such as tenured professors, deans of departments, and administrators, but especially in a department that calls itself African American Studies. Real diversity policies that include the people of the surrounding community 
could help uplift all of North Philly's living standards. That's why we should all chant, re reinstate Tony Montero and give him tenure. Reinstate Tony Montero 